Are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. I'm going to show you how to turn two or more BBC micro bits into a binary adding machine using the same code on each micro bit. All you need is more than one micro bit and some crocodile clip leads and possibly an LED. The ability to add two numbers together is a fundamental building block of any calculating machine. If you can add, you can multiply because multiplication is repeated addition. If you can add, you can probably subtract, and that means you can do division as well, as division can be thought of as repeated subtraction. The ability to add numbers is also fundamental to building computers. As well as solving math problems, adding numbers enables computers to find data in memory, to step through lists of instructions, as well as more exciting things like moving a spaceship across your screen in a game. Electronic circuits that can do sums and do them very quickly, are called adders. Lots of them are wired together to form the arithmetic logic unit in the processor at the heart of every computer, tablet, phone, and many electronic devices like TVs and washing machines. Humans usually count in a system based around the number 10 because we have 10 fingers. We use 10 different symbols, zero through to nine, to record numbers. And each column is worth 10 times more than the one to its right. So we have ones, tens, hundreds and thousands. Computers, on the other hand, use the binary system, which just uses two symbols, zero and one. This is because computers are made up of millions of tiny switches and a switch can be used to store a binary number. Off means the number zero and a switch that's on means the number one. This is why the universal on-off power symbol used on many devices is a zero with a one inside. So switches form the circuits that make up computers by making logic gates. Logic gates take simple binary inputs, on or off, one or zero, and make different outputs. Some are very simple, like AND gates. An AND gate gives an output only if both its inputs are switched on. The OR gate, on the other hand, will give an output if either of its inputs is turned on. And the exclusive OR gate will give an output if either input is switched on, but not both. Why do you need to know that? Because logic gates like these make up computer memory, but they're also the building blocks of the arithmetic logic unit, the part of the processor that does all the maths, all the number crunching. If you connect up an AND gate and an exclusive OR gate, you can use it to add two binary numbers together. This is called a half adder. Each switch is a zero or a one, depending on whether it's turned on or off. And the lights show the sum. A light that's on represents a one, and if it's off, it represents zero. You'll see here that if both switches are off, it's zero plus zero, so no lights are lit. We have binary zero zero. If either switch A or B is on, the sum light is lit, but not the carry. So we have the binary number zero one. But if both A and B are switched on at the same time, that means we're adding one plus one. And the answer is one zero. Why one zero? Well, it doesn't mean 10. It means we have no units and we've got one in the two column. So the answer to one plus one is two. Last year, I made a project using six micro bits to simulate a half adder, though you could replace the two input micro bits with real switches to use just four micro bits instead. We have separate micro bits acting as an AND and an exclusive OR gate, taking real electrical signals, processing the inputs and producing outputs that add two numbers together. Of course, a microbit contains thousands of real logic gates, so it is a little bit crazy to turn just one microbit into a single logic gate, but it's interesting to code it and connect all the parts together to make one of the most fundamental parts of any computer system. That's only adding two single digits together though, and it uses a lot of microbits. So I've just made another project where you can make a full adder using a single microbit and connect them together. The full adder has not two, but three inputs. A, B, and a carry in. 
as well as the two numbers you're adding, the carry in takes the carry out from a neighboring adder, just as you add in any numbers you carry when you're doing column addition in base 10 arithmetic. So you can add together as many full adders as you like to allow you to add some really big numbers together. And every single adder you add makes the largest number you can add twice as big. So here's how you connect it together. Use as many micro bits as you like, and the same code goes on every one. Turn the micro bits on their side. Pin one is the carry out. So connect pin one to its neighbors pin zero, the carry in, and keep going until you run out of micro bits. This leaves us at the end with one carry out left over, but we don't need to let that go to waste. If you've got an LED lying around, connect its long leg, the anode, to the final carry out and its short leg, the cathode, to ground. And while you're there, connect all the ground pins together to complete the electrical circuit. You could power each micro bit individually from batteries or USB, and indeed it's probably safer to do that, but I've been a little bit cheeky here. I've only powered the micro bit on the right and I've powered all the others from it by joining their three volt pins together. If you connect many more than three together, this probably wouldn't work. So let's have a look at how the binary adding machine works. I've got my three micro bits, they're all wired together. If you look around the back, I've got all the wires around the back. It's like the wiring loom of a Cray-1 supercomputer around there. I've even used really short cables to make it add up more quickly. I'm joking, of course. Uh, now, the top row of switches on the micro bits, these represent the first number, the A value that we're going to add up. And you'll see if I switch the, press these buttons, the A buttons, they toggle on and off. Now, don't look at the numbers, look instead at the pixel in the top right hand corner. That represents the state that that button is in. The numbers are the result of the sum that we're going to be doing. So if I press that button, it lights up in the top corner to show you it's on. And if I press it again, it goes off. Now the bottom row of B buttons, that's the second value that we're going to add. So with this setup, we can add two three digit binary numbers together using the switches on the top and the switches on the bottom. And each micro bit represents a different place value. That's our ones, that's our twos, that's our fours. And we've got an extra LED, which we'll come to in a moment. Right, so if I want to add one plus one, simplest sum I can think of, I'm going to need the binary number one, which is gonna be zero, zero, one. So I'll turn that on, zero, zero, one in the pixels in the corner. And I need to do the same on the bottom. So I'm gonna go zero, that's turned off, zero. And then I need to turn this one on. So I'll press the button B on the last micro bit. And you can see it's done the sum correctly. One plus one is two, which is zero, one, zero in binary. You can see I've got one unit in the twos column. So that's worked out pretty well. Now let's try doing two plus two. So if I do two plus two, I'm gonna need a two over here on the A row. And I'll need a two on the B row. And you'll see that's done that correctly as well. It's added two plus two. We've got one in the fours column and nothing in the twos or the ones column. You'll also notice that another LED has lit up. When we added one plus one, we got an LED here. And we've added two plus two, we've got another LED here. That's the carry in LED. It's showing that when I added two plus two, this micro bit here sent a carry out signal on pin one, and it was picked up on pin zero on micro bit over here, the micro bit in the fours column, and it's lit up its carry in pixel to show that it's got a carry digit as well. Okay, let's reset it. Let's try and do a slightly more complicated sum. Let's try and add five plus five and see what happens. Now, if I want to make a five in binary, I'm going to need a four and a one. So I'll turn one on, on the top row. So 101, that's five in binary. That's the A row. Let's do the same on the B row. So I'll turn that on and turn that on. Now, what have we got? Well, five plus five in decimal, base 10 arithmetic is 10. What number have I got here? Well, reading across, it looks like we've got 010, but actually we've got 1010 because this carry LED comes out of our final micro bit and represents the place value for the number eight. So we've got 1010. We've got 18 and 12, eight plus two, makes 10. So it's actually done that correctly. It's done that sum correctly. 
We've added five plus five using our binary adder using three micro bits and we have got the answer 10. Let's look at how the code works for my micro bit full adder. The same program goes on every micro bit, no matter how many you've got chained together, just like a real adder uses identical circuits connected together. It uses two variables, A and B, to store the values that you're adding together, but instead of giving them numerical values of zero or one, I'm using true or false. True means a value of one, and false means a value of zero. And I'm gonna set both of these to false at the start of the program. Calling zero false and using true to represent one is also common when talking about logic gates and circuits. The charts that show how logic gates work are called truth tables. Another reason for using true and false to represent zero and one is it makes it really easy to flip each variable's value when you press the buttons A and B. When you press button A, it sets the value of variable A to not A. So if it's zero, it becomes one. If it's one, it becomes zero. It's a very simple way of changing the switch of a button when you press it. I've used another subroutine, another function here, show buttons. This shows the LED status buttons to show you whether the button is on, whether it has a value of one or zero. I've just put that in a separate part of the program, a separate routine to keep the code easy to read. As with many computer programs, the real business goes on inside the forever loop. I have used another function here, another subroutine called get carry in. What this does is it keeps checking the carry in pin, pin zero, to see if it's getting a signal. If it is getting a carry in signal, it sets the carry in variable to be true and it plots its pixel on the LED display. If it's not, it unplots the pixel. Now, the real business of the program goes on in this big if-then block. Rather than trying to implement the logic gates that make up a full adder, I just looked at the truth table for a full adder and I worked from the bottom up and kind of reverse engineered it. If all the inputs are turned on, A and B and the carry in, that means we're adding one plus one plus one. And that's one one in binary. One plus one plus one is three, which is one one in binary. So we want to show a one on the display and we're going to set the carry out pin, pin one, to one. We're going to send a carry out signal. The next two blocks here deal with the situation where we've got two inputs turned on but not the third. In that case we're adding one plus one which is two, which is one zero in binary. So we're going to show zero on the display but we're going to turn on the carry out bit. So we're carrying out a one and showing zero on the display in these two situations. Now we're running out of options. If none of those cases is true, and we've got one signal coming in, we've got either an A or a B or a carry in, that means we've only got one digit. So we just want to show a one on the display and we're not going to set any carry out signals. And if none of those is true, that means we must have nothing. We've got zero and zero and zero. So we're going to show a zero on the display and set the carry out to zero. As my micro bits are on their sides, I've used functions to draw the one and zero numbers. If you make an adding machine using this program, do let me know, or if you have any ideas for improving it.